Welcome everybody to the What's Up with Onyx Path uh, panel here at TriatCon 2021. Uh, super excited to have uh, everyone here to talk about the awesome things that Onyx Path is doing. Onyx Path rep is represented really strongly at our um, at our convention because we love Onyx Path games. And um, before we get into the actual panel, I want to say we have raised twelve hundred dollars so far towards the Helen Keller Foundation. Yeah, the foundation we're running. Oh, lovely. Um, and that that amount will raise because at some point I'll be putting money toward the foundation thing as well, um, as well as some other things that we're matching funds for. Um, Onyx Path is also running a sale for Triatcon that you can find more information on at triatcon.com backslash sponsors backslash again. I don't know if that last backslash is needed, but it's there. Um, so if you're interested, Double backslash. In, going, so if you're interested backslash. in a discount, go and get it. Um, folks, if you'd like to introduce yourselves, I know who everybody is, but other people might not. So who are you and why are we excited to be talking to you today? Okay. Um, I'm Rich Thomas. I am the founder and creative director of Onyx Path Publishing. And I'm here to talk about uh, some of the bigger picture things that we're up to, as well as uh, interfere and uh, kibitz with uh, my, my friends and co-workers and colleagues who are also here. And so I do kind of a little. And also it, we have, why don't you get it? I'm, I'm uh, Eddie Webb. Uh, I am one of the in-house developers here at Onyx Path. Uh, I primarily handle um, the, the Onyx Path owns and uh, uh, creator owned projects. So that's um, Scion, Trinity Continuum, Scarred Lands, watch well, no longer Scarred Lands, um, uh, Pugmire, Cavaliers of Mars, so on and so forth. Uh, all the Story Path games as well. Um, but not all of the story path games, Eddie. Yeah, because, that's right. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah. You keep stealing parts of my turf. <laughs> and by stealing it, it, it them, I give them away year. to you. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, the toxic landfill bits. Um, so, yes, you've got uh, me, Matt, Matthew Dawkins. Uh, I am also one of the in-house developers i oversee the world of darkness game lines as well as they came from beneath the sea beyond the grave camp murder lake and the other they came from games in development uh, i've also got scarred lands and legend law under my oversight belt uh, and yeah it's it's lovely to be here for triacon that was a mixed metaphor i also want to say that uh, uh Dixie Cochran, who is our other in-house developer and who uh, oversees Exalted and Chronicles of Darkness, and all of our editors um, cannot be here today because she's getting her second COVID shot. And we kind of thought, hmm, priorities. That's yeah, a, that's that is a little, little more important. A bit more important. Um, and I guess that leaves me. I'm uh, Travis Legg. I am the uh, I work on Scarred Lands uh, development. I do a bit of development for uh, Mage 20. Uh, tons of writing and uh, most of these, you know, like the scheduling coordination for our beautiful, wonderful Twitch channel. Where uh, I'd like to thank you all for joining us at. That's where we are right now. <laughs> then is now. Well, we've answered the age old question from Spaceballs. When will then be now? It's now. <laughs> <laughs> I can think of other more philosophical things maybe we should be focusing on, but what the heck? <laughs> You are my brother's sister. From sisters, space balls in particular. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. The, the Dow of space balls. I think that should be a... Yeah. <laughs> Mel would enjoy it. And then sue us. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, Onyx Path, uh, of course, uh, we're here because uh, uh, we, we make tabletop RPGs. And we do a lot of work with um, with our friends, Josh and a bunch of the other people who are running games, so it's a it's a it's a nice uh, coming coming to hang out sort of moment. Um, but we also support uh, the the charitable work that they're doing here, and also the idea that people can get out and play a lot of different games today here at the con. That's a if anything we'd like to see more of is people. Um, playing different games than the ones that they're, they're used to doing. Um, not, and that's not just selfish because we have 847 different game lines that we, we publish. It's also because I think it's, it's good across the board to find out how other games play and what works for you. Mm -hmm. so, thanks so much for having us, Josh. And um, I, think, I think we're, I hope, but I, I think we're having a good time. So um, <laughs> the other thing is what else, what are we up to? What is up with Onyx Path? Uh, we've been doing a what's up panel 
since before there was an onyx path which was like 10 years ago we ah, geez, yeah. that started and i think probably almost maybe even five years before that we were doing a what's up with white wolf panel uh eddie and i uh, mm-hmm. at various conventions across the country and the world. So it's kind of a, a, a good tradition. And we, that's why we wanted to bring it here today to just kind of talk about some of the things we're up to. Um, a lot of a lot of people get their news from us on our social media or in the Monday meeting notes every week on the blog. But uh, there's probably people who popped in here to find out what's going on that uh, don't know that. So we're going to do a, a brief recap of some of our the highlights of things we talked about doing uh, over the last uh, few months after we, we got out of the, uh, the, the the negative zone of 2020 and, uh, and uh, pushed forward on a bunch of projects and a bunch of uh, deals that we had uh, been working on but couldn't really bring together because hmm, 2020. Yeah. Um, big thing I announced, uh, I don't know, it was a month ago now, seven weeks ago, something like that. What um, is time? Yes. Uh, that's something we definitely have learned from the last year, um, is that uh, we put together a, uh, a partnership or a deal with a company, uh, JNA, JNK, sorry, um, Productions, who are doing uh, the development work uh, to get ready for a pitch to do a Scion TV show. Um, and that's been something that uh, we've been working back and forth on for, for, for a lot of months, uh, all through two. 2020 and they're very excited about uh it's at the stage where concepts pages and pitches and pitch decks are all being prepared and and and, uh put together and we're very very excited to be part of the the beginning of that to work as closely as we have been with j and k because they're they're very very uh nice people huge fans of scion and and that's one of the reasons why we thought it would be a great idea to work with them because they're also individually very experienced in television and television production. Um, Eddie has to go now because he has to go uh, get brownies out of the oven. Going back to his home planet. <laughs> yes, home planet of Eddie of Web. So I want to throw out that I'm wearing one of the Scion shirts that Onyx Path has on Redbubble. Um, Ooh. So if you're big Scion fans. Go out and get the merchandise on Redbubble. That was a pitch. I'm throwing it out there. That's excellent. Yep. Um, so we're going to keep letting people know the information as things come through to us about how things are going with the with the uh, create, creating the pitch process, coming up with things. We'll have some fun and cool uh, items we'll be showing in the course of doing that because when they're creating this sort of pitch package, um, they're also wanting to excite the people at the various networks they'll be pitching to. Uh, I call them networks you know, old school, but it's, uh, you know, it's the st- various streaming services and such. So uh, as those things get revealed to us, we'll, we will we will tease people with them. We will show them. We will we'll have a good time with it uh, and see how this process goes, because nobody really knows. It's 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 television. It's a, it's a crazy place. Um, but the guys who were working with at J&K, they have uh, been through this process multiple times before, uh, even if uh, it was all individually and now they're together in, in, in this uh, this basic startup company um, that you know, we feel really, really like Scion's in a really good place, really safe place for it. So uh, that was one thing. Uh, anybody else want to jump in with a thing? I think just popped thing. in. <laughs> he's like, like, Bil- he's like Bilbo, <laughs> yeah, pulling, <laughs> pulling the ring the on, off. taking it off. I, I, well, yeah, actually, I must go now. <laughs> <laughs> my, my brownies are in the the oven. Not half as many as I would like, but half as many as I would deserve. What do That's I have in my like, oven? What do the brownies I have are in the oven. oven? I repeat, the brownies are in the oven. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a fair question. Um, but no. Um, uh, so, uh, as I mentioned before, one of the things that I'm responsible for is uh, Pug- the Realms of Pugmire, which is the game that uh, I uh, am the creator of and work jointly with Onyx Path on. Um, and we have are deep in the weeds of wrapping up, depending on how you view planet, uh, playtesting on Squeaks in the Deep, which is the latest uh, adventure supplement for both uh, Pugmire and the Cats version of the game, Monarchies of Mao. Uh, it is a game that will feature playable rodents, so you can play rats and mice, and uh, you explore what is known as the Underneath, which is the previously undiscovered, or at least unmentioned, uh, 
world beneath both Pugmire and Monarchy's Mouth actually connects up and you chance to kind of explore it. It's, it's, it's our attempt to kind of a narrative mega dungeon, if you will. Uh, and in fact, uh, Travis was uh, one of the writers on it. He uh, helped with the psionic powers, um, which are going to be a yeah. unique feature of rodents. They have mind powers. Uh, and uh, we've been, uh, we play tested it at um, Virtual Horror Con, had a lot of fun. We did a one of the play tests on our channel here. Um, and so I believe uh, the Forpal Tales folks are going to be doing a play test of it uh, in a month or so. So um, we're, it's going to be really exciting. And that's probably going to hit Kickstarter soon ish, but not immediately. So sometime before the end of the year. Do you expect any playtesting of that to happen at uh, Onyx PathCon next month? Probably. Um, uh, it, it, uh, one of the things that was discussed, I was like, oh, I could run the playtest there, and then I could run this and this and this. And then uh, uh, Matt McElroy pointed out, it's like, actually, Eddie, you only have so many hours in a day to actually do things. Uh, so I did reluctantly allow other folks to maybe do some playtesting for Squeaks and Deep at Onyx PathCon. Um, because the other thing, big thing that I've been working on is a Trinity Continuum Anima. Uh, this is the only the second ever new setting for Trinity, counting the Trinity Continuum Core rulebook setting. Uh, it's the first setting with an A, which matters to people. Um, so it, it is kind of our, our fourth in the sense of it's the fourth kind of support book for the Trinity Kingdom. And it's set between Aberrant and uh, Aeon. It is set in 2084. It is our cyberpunk slash lit RPG game. So um, it's set in the uh, future city of Cascade uh, after the aftermath of the Albert War. And one of the biggest uh, recreational components of Cascade is this massive MMO called Terra Surge that people play with their brain implants to get a completely full virtual immersive experience. Uh, and weird things are happening in Terra Surge, which prompts the player characters to investigate and find out what that is and how it impacts their daily lives in Cascade. So it is definitely kind of has a cyberpunk edge to it. Um, there's definitely exploration of uh, the kinds of, of political structures and conflicts that cyberpunk games are known for, but it has a strong vein of hope and adventure that also comes from the RPG side. So it's not a blending of genres so much as an interesting putting two distinctive genres side by side and seeing how they compare and contrast against each other. And that is I, that I will be playtesting uh, at Onyx PathCon next month, and that will be the first time we're playtesting it publicly. So that'll be very, very exciting. I'm very much looking forward to that as one of the playtesters. So. Yes, yes, Rich. We did a, uh, a prelude to kind of get all the playtesters kind of up to speed, and, and uh, um, Rich has been enjoying playing his uh, boxer character that I, I wrote up for him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. Is, it, is that your Pugmire crossover? He's playing an actual boxer. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to do your best Robert De Niro's Jake LaMotta. I could have been a contender. Could have been somebody. I'm a force. I'm a force. <laughs> I, I could go into Eddie Izzard's uh, take on that whole thing right now, but I don't. I don't know who's listening. That's fair. Did you plug my fair. wife? Did you plug my wife? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Eddie, can you give us a brief description of lit RPG for folks that maybe aren't familiar with that? Term? Oh, sure. Um, uh, it's a relatively new genre. Um, uh, lit RPG are stories where the characters are in a video game typically a fantasy video game and the characters are aware of the tropes of video games and reference them um so an actual mainstream example this would be jumanji uh the characters in jumanji actually realize they're in a game and reference the game mechanics as points to their story um so lit rpgs a lot of lit rpgs revolve around some form of player trapped in a video game and we're definitely channeling that to a degree um so but it, as opposed to playing in a normal fantasy game where the characters are supposed to be completely in the world and the players are representing things like hit points and their mechanics we expect the characters to actually have that kind of engagement and there's inside of anima going to be a whole new much more streamlined version of story path that you can use to play the mmo and so your characters can actually reference those stats on your character sheet so you actually be able to take the meta knowledge of this miniature version of the game and actually use it directly so you could say i have three hit points left so i need you to heal me and make those comments in character hey don't worry guys i got this drone uh summoning ability we'll be okay right exactly but you're just a butterfly. Yeah, but I could do this thing. 
So you're sure we, where we're going to start, like for the play test uh, at, uh, at the Onyx PathCon, right? We're going to be yeah. in the game, in, in Terra Surge, looking for clues to who this guy who got killed outside of. Yeah. So um, how it's going to work is uh, I'll, I'll, people, obviously, who uh, weren't in the play test, I'll give a, a brief recap of the players went to the next so again, like a short like, hour of, of gameplay. Um, but they're in the process of logging in where I left it off. So the, the first thing you do is you'll be seeing MMO stuff like immediately in that play test. And we'll play that for a chunk of time. Um, and then we'll switch over and then we'll start playing in, in the cyberpunk cascade side of the thing. And some of the players are going to dress up. Um, I'm looking into some props. Uh, so it's going to be really exciting. Yeah. yeah and it's also, I think the first, oh. uh, the first time people have asked us to do, are you going to do a fantasy game with story path? You know, Ooh, I want to play story path fantasy. And so this is sort of our testing the waters, seeing what works and what doesn't work within the confines of, you know, MMO logic. Mm -hmm. and, and that's one thing that's it's relevant is um, uh, the uh, setting for the MMO was actually a, uh, uh, written for us uh, by uh, Dominic, whose name, last name I just immediately forgot. Um, but uh, it is not a kind of dwarves and elves generic kind of D&D &D style fantasy world. It's its own kind of distinctive thing. Um, it is, there are elements of MMO design that you can recognize, like, you know, there's going to be a healer, there's going to be a, a DPS person, there's going to be a tank. So all of those MMO tropes are going to be there, but they're not necessarily going to be classic fantasy trope that's its own distinctive world its own interesting so so it, it, it is a game world that you could really spend an entire chronicle and just playing that if you want to if you want to just play this mmo style system there's nothing stopping you from doing it you just roll up characters for it and just play in that environment if you're really really cool too yeah we get enough interest we'll we'll do some books on raid dungeons mm -hmm. yeah absolutely we'll so i think those are the, the main things on my radar was that what i said we'll call it watch the tail yeah <laughs> But I think those are the main things on my plate right now. Um, well, your game isn't the only one that has its own miniature version of the story path system in, because in fact, the book we co-developed, Eddie, NWE, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we've got a wrestling RPG coming for Aberrant specifically. Mm -hmm. uh, although, you know, with a bit of work, it could fit pretty much anywhere within the Trinity Continuum because this uh, wrestling RPG that we've got for Aberrant has a division for Novas and mm -hmm. a division for, for uh, well, talents, essentially. Yeah. So um, you've got... Um, it's a very flexible game. It's got its own miniature system that the characters will use when they are performing for the right. audience, when they're performing in the ring. So you're not relying on lots of traits that you're never going to use in a wrestling match. As much as I love traits like culture and enigmas, they don't often come up when you're trying to get someone in a figure four leg lock. Yeah, I, th uh, I think it's only four skills, right? <sighs> yeah, yeah, we're down to four skills for, for this game. So yeah, we, we're playing around with story path lot because we're finding it quite a flexible system that is it's usable in lots of different ways much as it has been for they came from and of course that's one of the big projects on my plate uh, beneath the sea is almost uh, we've almost released all of the source books for it that we have on the sort of uh, line uh, beyond the grave is the next one that will come out uh, and then there's camp murder lake which is a sort of mega source book for beyond the grave that sets uh, the games in teen slasher horrors of the 1980s early 90s um, and yeah uh, and you know they, they often say that your favorite, the favorite thing that your work that, uh, that your favorite work is the one you're working on right now, mm -hmm. because the more distance you have between when you've created something and now, the more you start to pick at it and see all of its faults. Um, I have a very, uh, very big place in my heart for Beyond the Grave. I think it's it's a fantastic use of the story path system, and for anyone unfamiliar, uh, they came from. All of them are 
movie genre games with a fairly hefty comedic tone, although they can be as horrific or as serious, as dramatic as you so wish. Beneath the Sea is a 1950s B-movie style game, very sci-fi. Uh, Beyond the Grave is very Hammer Horror, Amicus, a bit of Roger Corman monster movies and so on, set 1970s-ish. Uh, as, as mentioned, uh, they came from Camp Murder Lake, is uh, which is still a fantastic title in my opinion, uh, mm -hmm. is 1980s slasher movies. And then we have the coming up, they came from Classified. Um <laughs> Uh, I don't know where that, uh, well, needs now to we need to redact classified, your classified <laughs> right <laughs> yeah they, they came from redacted uh <laughs> Uh, they came from Classified, the name for which hasn't been revealed yet, uh, and I, nor has its subject matter. Uh, but this is a book that we've been working on for around six months, uh, and we should again hopefully be seeing a kickstart of this one at some point this year. It's another uh, movie genre game. Uh, it still has its own share of comedy and action i'd say there's more action in this one i'm not going to give too many teasers about his content we will announce it when we are ready but there is a um there's some new mechanics in it again speaking to the versatility of story path and there may even be more they came from in the works in the background still so it's a uh, fantastic brand. Matthew. what a fantastic it, 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 is, a, it is fantastic it, it, it makes me want to i don't know uh fire my projectile sword into the air um <laughs> <laughs> in glee um so yeah yeah we've got uh several they came from going we of course also have world of darkness that's a very big uh property that we license from paradox interactive and uh travis can speak uh at length and he will about the mage <laughs> books that we've got going uh i've um i'm currently co-developing with leith shields the apocalyptic record for werewolf the apocalypse and it occurs to me i don't think we've discussed apocalyptic record on any no i just get time to talk about it anywhere yeah. uh we announced it on uh -huh. yeah uh so uh it's a, to some extent it's the beckett's jihad diary of werewolf but not quite uh the constraints of werewolf are that werewolves don't tend to be uh people who go around writing emails, writing lengthy letters to each other and so on. A lot of it is conveyed as tales around the campfire. Um, they, they're very much oral historians, so there's a lot of uh, subjectivity to their stories. So a bit of a Rashomon feel to it. And that's what we're trying to convey with Apocalyptic Record. Uh, we have one major chapter for every auspice. Uh, this was a decision of mine from the start because I felt like the auspices are almost the part of the game that quickly gets forgotten in favor of the tribe. So we wanted every single auspices opinion on some, on various events that have occurred throughout Wealth canon. Right. Cause they're very specific. And it I mean, allows, a, it, there's, there's hmm. the difference between any given auspice is, is actually wider than the difference between the tribes. Yeah. It's, yeah. So yeah. Points certainly. of view characters, you get, you get very different points of views, which is what you're looking for. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, we've had a lot of fun with that. Myself and Leith have already started development on some of the manuscripts for that. Some of them are being uh, drafted, uh, redrafted, amended by writers, but we're very happy with the content. Uh, it's really exciting stuff. Uh, the writers have... Much like uh, Neil Raymond Price and I did with Beckett's Jihad Diary, as did all of the writers on that, we poured through the old vampire books for that book. We did the same thing for Werewolf. So you've got lots of Easter eggs, lots of references to obscure werewolves like Piss in the Wind, the Bone Nora from Rage Across New York or something like that. It's still my favorite name for a werewolf. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which is why I mentioned it. Um, but yeah, there's uh, there's a lot that's going on in Apocalyptic Record. So for fans of Werewolf and the World of Darkness in general, I think there's a lot to look forward to there. But anyway, that will be me done for now. Let's pass over to Travis. That probably will be kickstarted much later in the year. Yeah. Can I yes, pop in with yeah. a question there, Matthew? Yeah, sure. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, sure. 
There's a question in the chat, and I think this is a really interesting one. Uh, will Apocalyptic Record tie into Werewolf 5th Edition, like Beckett's Jihad Diary did with Vampire 5th Edition? Um, so, uh, well, I'll answer that. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'll answer that um, in the best way I can. So, uh, this is very much, in my opinion, a Werewolf 20 book rather than a Absolutely. Werewolf 5th Edition book. Uh, however, uh, what we experience with Paradox is we will send a manuscript off to them uh, and we have some idea of what Werewolf 5 is going to contain. Some of us do. and we'll, But we'll send it off to them. And if they want more hooks and links to Werewolf 5th Edition, that is their time to tell us what exactly they want us to put in. But if they don't want that, if they want it to essentially act as a cap, stone to w20 and all previous editions that's fine too what we found with uh, a lot of chatter online is there's still a lot of diehard v20 fans and previous editions of vampire for that matter and i have no reason to doubt that will be the same thing for werewolf so for people who want a big book of meta plot for wealth the apocalypse pre w5 it's going to have that and you never know paradox might ask us to put various things in that seed Werewolf 5. We don't know yet because we haven't sent off the manuscript approval, um, but it's it's certainly a possibility. Awesome. As the Werewolf the Podcast guy, I am excited <laughs> for this, so uh, I look forward to it. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess uh, that's my, my cue to jump in. Is that, uh... I was going to segue you, but yeah, just, yeah. just go ahead, Mr. Me. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Sorry, I'm, I'm over here super excited because uh, as Matthew's talking about uh, the apocalyptic record um staying in the realm of uh world of darkness we also have lore of the traditions uh in the works for uh mage 20th anniversary edition which is uh a similar um book in the sense that it is uh very much about in world uh character perspectives uh though it's tackled you know along the lines of the various traditions and sort of focuses you know right now we're just sort of wrapping up the initial pass uh, of of writing drafts so there's very exciting material coming in uh i i'm leery to say too much about exactly what it covers but uh, a lot of it's in the same vein and the same sort of inspirations and motivations as what you're seeing in apocalyptic record um one of the things that i'm super excited about and proud of about lore of the traditions is the writing team that we've assembled for it, uh, I think is uh, probably some of the, it's a lot of writers who've worked on Mage historically, but also just being able to assign them into um, working on and focusing on traditions that uh, they are bringing their own personal cultural knowledge to, uh, being able to sort of reconcile some of the places where uh, in the past, the presentation of some of these traditions uh, maybe didn't have as much uh, connection to the people that they were referring to. So being able to sort of rectify that and, and string that together for, uh, you know, for going forward to have those cultures uh, being depicted uh, by their, in their own voices, I think is super exciting. Um, so I'm really stoked about being able to work on that. And while simultaneously, while that's, Getting off the ground, we are buttoning things up uh, for Technocracy Reloaded to get out the door to people. Um, I am currently in process of, uh, you know, tightening up indexing pretty much at this point. So, you know, Sweet. barring any, um, you know, grand tragedies or, you know, new apocalypses, we're just getting out of one. So hopefully another one doesn't start off, but um, that's uh, going to be in people's hands very soon. In and proper mage fashion, maybe if we all think everything's going to be better, it will. Right. <laughs> Everybody believe very hard that everything is going to be okay. And, and, Clap and your hands. Show. Um, so yeah, we've got that going. And then there are some ancillary products that came along with that, uh, the Operatives dossier. Uh, really excited to share some of the content that's in there with folks. Um, that takes a, a slightly more technocratic oriented view on a lot of items, but there's, I think you'll find in Operatives Dossier, uh, regardless of whether you're a fan of the Council of Nine or the Disparate Alliance or, you know, uh, the Technocracy, there's going to be something in there for everyone. Uh, so I definitely recommend keeping an eye on that and checking that out when that drops. Um, 
I guess in terms of World of Darkness stuff, the only other uh, thing is Victorian Mage, which had a awesome, uh, successful run on Indiegogo. Um, how that plays into maybe Rich, maybe you can speak a little bit to how that plays into overall crowdfunding plans, because that's all above uh, my pay grade. Um, but yeah, my understanding you get is paid? it went uh, uh, right <laughs> once in a while. Um, you're, you're just sitting there. You don't need any more money on top of your pile of owning the uh, entire industry. Uh, Travis, <laughs> Travis is uh, what he would get paid goes towards my Italian vacation fund. Oh, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Uh, uh, one day, Rich will gift me with a sock, and then I'll be free. But until yeah. then, uh, <laughs> nobody <laughs> give Travis a sock. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, um, the, my understanding is is that the uh, Indiegogo went very well, and there's a couple of additional products uh, in the works as a result of that. Um, yeah. Some of which I got to work on. The uh, there's a jump start that I'm very excited about. Uh, worked on with uh, Rachel Judd and Christopher Mickle, I believe, were the creative team on that, which was really fun. Uh, got a really uh, interesting kind of spooky little story tied into that that I'm I'm excited to share with folks. Yeah, um, it did go well, Travis. Uh, you know, when we when we started running it on Indiegogo, it was an experiment to see. Uh, we knew that the mage the mage uh, fans would be willing to to experiment a little bit with us. It's kind of you know, it's like kind of what mage is about, and also um, there's just an overwhelming love there. So we we, we decided to go with uh, with Victorian over there, uh, see how that went. Um, we got we got a fair amount of pushback, and and we worked our way through a lot of those questions about you know what's the difference between Indiegogo and Kickstarter? Why are you doing that? And uh, now I have to figure out another password and all kinds of stuff like that. But at the end, um, we got done and said, okay, follow us over to BackerKit, which is the uh, the service we use after the, uh, a crowdfunding project, uh, and uh, and to be fair to the people who just couldn't make it work with Indiegogo for a lot of reasons, um, we continued to count uh, people who were picking up the book on, on BackerKit towards our stretch goals. Uh, I think we're at the limit now, or we were last week uh, of that. I think that was 60 days, and... Um, and we, we we funded all the stress goals that we had we had on the roster uh, through that. So people who backed it going to get all those things. People who went into backer kit and, and also ordered it going to get all that stuff. And we get to do you know a, a couple extra chapters uh, for a couple of sweet projects uh, because people kept backing it. Um, and it, it I think it, I think it worked out pretty well all the way around. So in general, it's viable. Um, I don't know the next time we're going to go over to Indiegogo. It's really one of those things where we go back and forth. What's best for us at any given time, uh, depending on uh, things. But we wanted to make sure that that avenue was open to us um, because it is a uh, anytime you're dependent upon one venue to get your stuff out to people, it puts you in kind of a, a tenuous position. You know, the world gets really weird sometimes and uh, like, we, were, we, we, we do get books through Studio 2 into distribution and into stores. So if you're interested in, in some of our books, uh, you can actually talk to your local game store and ask them uh, if, if their distributor uh, doesn't work. They can go directly, the store can go directly to Studio 2's website and, uh, and order from them. Um, or at least, you know, they will, they will intercede and, and talk to your distributor so we can get those things into stores. But of course, in 2020, a lot of stores had to stop ordering and just lay low. And in fact, some distribu distrib distributors stopped for a bit. Yeah. Um, that could have really crushed us if we were relying on that. But we also have drive through and we also have Kickstarter and we also have uh, other venues that people can get our things. And so it uh, it worked out. So that's kind of the logic behind it. Yeah, let's try out Indiegogo and see if, see if we like it. And it was, a lot, it was a huge learning curve for us too. So we're really grateful for everybody who came over and, and, and continued to pledge and, and be excited about the project uh, while we were figuring out what, what do you mean there's no they said it was going to end this day and and it's still going why is this still <laughs> yeah, going yeah. <laughs> what's happening what is poor, it ever going to end? poor james was starting a kickstarter while ending a kickstarter where we thought we were gonna you know right, end one a, and then start one have a breather in between for the poor guy yeah well i mean a couple hours at least <laughs> rather than running <laughs> running the end of one the beginning of another simultaneously poor uh, james we love him but wow uh, well and if that was his serves, finest hour however 
It was. If, if memory serves, Ian was also in that boat, right? Because the uh, next Kickstarter that kicked off was something that Ian was the developer on. Isn't it? Yeah, I think he did three in a row. Yeah. Where he was, he was involved on the development or, or heavily on the creative end. So, so we see you yes, in because chat, it Ian, was... and we love you. You, you work so yeah. hard and you're awesome. Thank you. Yep. Ian did, did a lot. He does. Yeah. So one question from the chat um, mm -hmm. is uh, about Legend Lore, uh, which is a game that people were pretty excited about. Mm -hmm. Where, uh, for folks that maybe don't read the Monday meeting notes, where's Legend Lore in the process right now? Uh, layout, I believe. Uh, art and layout. Um, all art notes have been submitted. It's uh, simply a case of waiting for artists to submit their work. Uh, Mike Cheney, our fantastic master of layout. Uh, well, we'll have to give him that title officially, I think. Maestro. Um, yeah, Maestro. Uh, the has Maestro. already worked out the Maestro. Yeah, he won't <laughs> like that. He will uh, not like that. That's too no. fancy. That's just too yeah. fancy. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, I think it's a tell Travis to shove it up his ass. Um, <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> Which is a uh, phrase you can frequently hear Mike say, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, but yes, uh, Mike knows how the book is going to look. Uh, it's part of the uh, layout artist's role. Is uh, and it's something I think a lot of people don't consider is uh, simple things like how many words can we fit on a page? How big is the border going to be? What is the border going to contain? Um, how much space is the art going to take up if it's a book with artifacts? Uh, as in handwritten letters and the like, how much more space is that going to take up? Because just because you've written 800 words that fit into one A4 page for one book doesn't mean that if that page is split up with lots of um, pieces of parchment and everything like that, all of a sudden you've got to take that, that extra content into account. So Mike has done that Plus and it really it's... Yeah, well, yeah, importantly. Uh, and... Um, there's a reason a book like Beckett's Jihad Diary took a huge amount of time to get finished uh, in from the art side. It wasn't because the artists were slow. It wasn't because Mike was slow. It's because this book was filled with these kinds of things. Legend Law has some of that. And the good news is Mike has already done what that, uh, I guess, the puzzle. Format layout. He's now just waiting for the pieces to come in. Yeah. Uh, so that's where Legend Law is at this time. And, Close. And that dovetails, I think, relatively neatly into Scarred Lands, which is the uh, other big 5e. 5e. Um, super exciting stuff going on there. We just uh, handed over um, the Visual Watch Kelder Mountains uh, manuscript to editing and art. So that's very exciting. Uh, it was a stretch goal on the Dead Man's Rest Kickstarter. Um, getting to dive in. Oh, you got the proof of Vigil Watch. Beautiful. Yeah, that's um, nice. Yeah, so that that's pretty. That's a pretty book. Um, Maps. Yeah, that, that was uh, um, so that one. I would assume will be uh, hitting the store relatively soon. Then Vigil Watch. Relatively um, soon. Yep. But there's still have to go through review both of the proofs, but uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, which is also like a super exciting. Uh, we've been very. I've been. I feel like I've won a lottery uh, with the work I've gotten to do on Scared Lands over the past like two years. Uh, getting to dive into you know Visual Watch and then again revisit that uh, sort of title uh, concept to explore the Kelder Mountains and get in and examine what was going on with the uh, Kelder Dwarves and the Drin the uh, Drindar Drindali. Who can't talk today. Um, so they will be focused, the focus of the Kelder Mountains book. Um, obviously, Dead Man's Rest is in process. We have uh, a lot of VTT assets that we need to generate for it and a lot of art to get uh, arted for it. So, uh, you know, if you keep an eye on the Monday meeting notes, the process of that will be uh, revealed. And we've got a couple of actual plays going on that are operating in that world as well. So if you want to tune in yeah. and check it out and kind of see what it's about... Uh, Dead Man's Rust was always designed to be big enough that you can uh, play from it for several years and not run out of material. Um, <laughs> so uh, it is a very big sandbox. Um, so definitely check out the uh, the actual play that's going on for that from our buddies over at Red Scar Gaming. Uh, and I'll be diving yeah, back into Yeah, ju just to... 
Uh, echo that, Travis. That red scar actual play is fantastic. Uh, the it is a brilliant uh, example of how you can use Dead Man's Rust, and uh, and yeah, if you also like my voice, you can listen to the Dead Man's Rust actual play with Moon Role Playing, which is available on their channel, and they always do a good show too. But sorry, Travis, do continue. Oh yeah, just uh, I'll be um, I'm on my channel on Plastic Age Plays. I'll be returning to mm-hmm. our uh, Scarlands. Uh, actual play sins of shells are that we do on uh, bi-weekly on Wednesdays probably in like the autumn and we'll be diving right into dead man's rest at that point with that show uh, as all of those characters have basically been exiled from shells are at this point uh, the Oops. Hornsaw Forest seems like a nice place for them to go visit. So. Yeah, I sure know um, the bad happens in the Hornsaw Forest. <laughs> Let's get stabbed by some unicorns, shall we? Right. Um, you know, it's just picking which blade to put it to put at your uh, at your back, and uh, unicorns are, are cute uh, ish. You, so they are um, cute. Um, so yeah, we'll be diving back into that on that end, and I'm just trying to think if there's anything else scars scarred lands related to share. Uh, there's uh, it's been very uh affirming and refreshing to see the uh ongoing expansion of frostlands of fenrelic content over at the Slurician vault um i'm glad to see that people seem to be uh enjoying that setting expansion and taking full advantage of the ability to create their own content for it um yep that's our community content uh site for scarlands Slurician mm-hmm. vault and uh Travis uh, kind of spearheaded uh, opening up an entire continent for uh, for anybody to go in there and create product uh, uh, for, for anything in there you know that, that stays within the boundaries whatever the rules are of Slurration Vault but by and large it's a, it's a huge playground for creators uh, and people can can write up new classes write up uh, you know areas uh, adventures put them up on Slurration and actually you know they go up for sale so it's a it's a good deal anybody you know who's familiar with community content uh, and how it works. It's basically, uh, we're saying, go ahead, make some things on this particular site. And, you know, you, you, you charge what you want to charge. Uh, we get a cut, uh, the site gets a cut and we, uh, and you get a cut. So it's, it's actually quite, uh, there's uh, there is, thing. there is fantastic Frostlands of Fenrelic content Mm -hmm. uh one of my favorites there's a uh people you can play that's also i guess a monster it's a kind of ice slime that cocoons uh a sentient being and just locks them away somewhere in a glacier and then you basically play the ice slime having taken the form of the person you have cocooned (laughs) uh so you're a kind of simulacrum doppelganger but very much focused on that arctic the thing style atmosphere that some of fenrelic has uh and i, I do like a wow. chilly uh, arctic setting so yeah uh, a big fan of frostlands of fenrelic i have it on my shelf somewhere awesome. <laughs> yeah um but i mean you know vtt wise I and mean, that's another thing that travis does a lot of work on uh we are we have multiple initiatives in that area and uh nothing that i really want to say yeah we're definitely doing that but you know we have done a whole bunch of tokens because they're relatively easy to do for people to play uh we just put out a set for chicago by night i think mm-hmm. um and so you know if if you want cool looking illustrations of, of your characters that you can use on, the, on any vtt site um you can you can pick those tokens up on drive through and uh and we're moving into other areas with vtt as well but like i said we're we'll, we'll talk about that stuff as it as it actually happens i think a little early little early to talk about it yeah um yep. but there's a lot of exciting stuff that's uh that's in the works for sure um you know and to yep. that end too i would encourage just you know personally if you're um if there's a vtt site that you're particularly a fan of uh you know let us know about it pop into the you know comments go into like our you know our discord let us know what you're using um and you know and even you know what kind of tips and tricks you might uh have i know some of the sites if we don't if there's not official support on uh the community is able to sort of generate their own assets and their own ways of making it work um so sharing that information with other folks in the community is a good way to make sure that uh, that play is accessible uh, while we're working on uh, getting you the official high quality, you know, uh, 
from the source uh, assets for those various platforms. Can anyone speak real quick to the uh, different community content sites that OnyxPath has? Uh, because there are a couple of them, um, and I think uh, people might be excited to hear more about them. Uh, I can because I think they're all the other rest of them are in my value like anyway. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there's Canis Miner, which is the specifically the Pugmire community content program. Um, and so, if you want to make anything for uh, Pugmire, Monarchies of Mao, Pirates of Pugmire, any of the supporting books for that, um, you could do that there, and it has its own list of, of requirements and, and thoughts and assets. Uh, but uh, a lot of our stuff is under the, the umbrella of the Story Path Nexus. Uh, so if there's a Story Path game um, and if we're in a position where we can offer community content for it, and I think all the games qualify right now. Um, Ultimately, they do. Yeah. Um, so uh, you can start to make community content through there. So right now, uh, Scion and Trinity Continuum are open. I believe uh, Aeon is open. Uh, they came for the C is open. Uh, Dystopia Rising Evolution is open. So uh, there's lots of different avenues that you can make stuff. And there are lots of people who are uh, uh, already contributing to both of those programs really heavily. There's, there's, I think last time I checked, like 30 or 40 Canis Minor projects. Um, people are making like new pantheons for Scion, um, you know, expanded rules bits for Scion and Trinity. Uh, and because the Story Path games are similar, but not the same, um, there are people who are doing like, here's uh, an expanded character sheet for one game, and then tweaking it and modifying it with all the nuances of the other story path games and, and duplicating those out. Uh, so it's a chance to kind of also kind of see, oh, hey, I'm not, not, not putting these projects together. I can kind of see what the nuances and difference are between these different interpretations of it. But also it's the, well, I like that, but I want it for my game. If, if it's not already there, you could probably just make it long fall with guidelines. Um, so yeah, so uh, uh, we're really happy with how all those programs have been going. Honestly, there's some really exciting stuff yep. happening in each of those areas, and we're just we're going to keep uh, uh, putting out more. And, and we, we try to keep uh, wherever it makes sense. We continue to open up. Um, like I believe recently, for almost all of our programs, we recently uh, unlocked fiction, so we've got like fiction now in all of our various worlds. Uh, so we're continuing to try to expand those as it makes sense, as well as in addition to adding new games that we could do community content for. Josh, you wouldn't know anything about anything in community content. No. Right? No, no, no. I, I only know a little bit having produced something for now. I can say every Onyx Path community content <laughs> program. So, yeah, no. it, and, it is awesome for folks that don't know. Go and do it. Go make your stuff. It, well, it, you'll enjoy it. And make one, money. one thing I, I, I want to just reinforce every chance I get when I talk about community content, uh, I think some people maybe – don't realize or, or maybe even feel a little intimidated by the concept of putting together like a finished book but you can take you know your your game notes from your home game you know if you made a couple of cool npcs or you know a neat encounter uh put it together in a word document there are word templates for every line uh and put it up yourself or you can get on again like our forums our discord and uh collaborate with other creators who might know the the layout skills and we provide assets that are free through those programs. So really the only barrier to entry is to just sit down and do it. Um, and, and you can, you know, even if it's something small, I know one of my, they came from offerings is, a, is like two pages. It's just, you know, gray aliens that drop cows on people from their uh, flying saucers. Um, like you do. I, 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 thought, I felt that it was a mechanic that uh, was sorely lacking and they came from beneath the sea. Sure. Uh, and despite yeah. Matthew's disagreement. But it's what I would do point. if I was a gray alien. <laughs> you can't throw uh, a bear or throw a cow. I, mean. I said, I said that's, that's clearly they came from outer space. Travis, you're that's breaking the ring. not my game. <laughs> cows are not from beneath the sea. I mean, yeah. unless something has gone horribly oh, wrong in the cows. past year than yeah, aware of. some yeah. some kind of land cow <laughs> <laughs> must have crawled back out exactly oh um, land cows so yeah the the, the, what were they thinking? Is very easy to put stuff together and even if it if you think it's like smaller or you know uh something that's minor nobody's gonna want to throw it up there for 50 cents or a buck and and you know recoup some of the cost of your investment in gaming books um if nothing else you know or use it like I do as the only way you buy gaming books now is from all of the, you know, <laughs> community content you put oh, out. Oh, what a great thing. Nice. You feed your addiction. Buy ours too, Josh. Um, <laughs> but the, um, 
the other, only other thing I wanted to pop in here, since I, I see that we're starting to head towards time, is uh, is we're working on um, the Exalted Essence uh, Kickstarter, right? Yes. Now. It is. It is the either our Exalted Essence or Squeaks in the Deep will be our next Kickstarter project, and um, we're basically trying to uh, do a a slim down version of, of Exalted Third Edition, uh, more of a, an easier on ramp to uh, to all the great stuff that's in Third Edition, and it doesn't. Uh, it's not. It's not like a three point five or anything like that. It's much more of a um, a simple way to get into it with a, a using all, all all the all the books that we put out for third edition and probably a whole bunch from second edition and first edition are still valid it it, it just gets you into it we think in a, in, a, in, a, in a like a simpler fashion and also because it's simpler we were able to put in all 10 of the exalted types uh where we will still continue to put out their their fat splats their classic big books for each one of them mm -hmm. but that's a process that our, our developers are very very particular about because they do want to make sure that all the all the the wheels and cogs fit together properly uh, because exalted can be a complicated system since it's you know it's complex in the sense of there's a lot of different pieces and a lot of things you can do with it it gives you an enormous amount of, of, of creativity and freedom but uh, and also has a huge backstory so it, it's very intricate yep basically so it's a uh, it's a great uh i think the essence is going to be seen as a very very nice way to get into it and then you as the players and you as as the, as the storyteller can put in as many of the things from third edition as you want or even ease everybody into third edition and then just roll from there mm -hmm. there was recently a very presence. awesome in-depth uh onyx pathcast on yes. exalted essence so people should go and listen to that because i found it fascinating and exciting because i've always wanted to play exalted but have never been able to convince people to buy into hey learn this whole big huge book system yeah, yeah. i mean the book is big and there's no way to get around that <laughs> it's a it's a really big rule book um and and that's the thing is essence is going to be smaller and i think just less intimidating i hope um and, and as you mentioned the uh the ox pathcast it's uh, a new one is put out every friday for over three years now um, oh yeah, yeah. wow yeah with, uh, with eddie webb matthew dawkins and dixie cochran our terrible trio of terrificness or a terrific trio of terribleness um, where they go into all kinds of our, our games. They go to deep dives in games. They do uh, actual plays and play tests. Uh, they have interviews with uh, our creators and with other, other people who, who are in the tabletop RPG business um, and, uh, and, and, and pick around in their heads for a little bit as well. And uh, like they talk about this week, uh, different games that they're currently playing. Yeah, it's definitely not a, a company podcast in the sense of today we will talk about the product. We do a lot of talking about the products too. Like like Josh said, we did a deep dive into Exalted Essence. Dixie and I talked about Squeaks in the Deep. Uh, Matthew talks a lot about uh, they came from. So, I mean, we do talk about the games as well. But we also talk about wrestling and Mario Karts and musicals. Yeah. And the, yeah, I mean, the, la the last... Oh, and the occasional fatty horn. But yeah, the last episode uh -huh. we did, uh, we actually took about an hour and five minutes to mention <laughs> one of our games. <laughs> <laughs> we, we did a what What are you playing? Uh, what are you playing episode? And we spoke about games pretty much every other RPG company in the industry. And then said, oh, and by the way. <laughs> and thank you, Matthew and Dixie, for finding those games that you were actually playing as opposed to Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> I mentioned I mentioned running Trinity. Did you finally? Yes. No, not like near the beginning, actually. Uh, I must have missed it. Uh, no, do we have any lose. questions? Do we have any questions to wrap up with? There, I know we're at time, but yeah, there are no uh, questions that I could see I that. We're in there. I think I spotted one that we did not cover yet, which was uh, a question uh, from uh, Puppy Lover twelve three nine seven. Any word on Deviant and what's going on there? Uh, getting ready for press, as far as I know. Yeah, that? That's a printer, isn't it? Or damn near. Yep. Let me check my notes. I believe we're waiting for uh, what we call a quote from the printer. Uh, which would also give Mike the specs for what he needs for the uh, the covered uh, dimensions. That's oh God, a, everything changed. 
Like so very soon, even theoretically, maybe. And there's yep. a couple of support books uh, that are in process for that as well. That yep, are pretty hot on the heels of the core, uh, as far as I know, in terms of like production where they're sitting in production. Mm-hmm. But all that's yeah. Yep. That uh, I think Mummy, the Curse, and Deviant, the Renegades are pretty much neck and neck, aren't they? I was they, just going to say that. Yeah, production and yep. Hunt. Yeah, Hunter is just a little bit farther back than that, but yeah, it's stealthier. It's it's moving through the tall grasses, you know. I mean, it's got to watch out well, for all the other creatures. It has to be as a hunter. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so we are at time. Uh, we have. Uh, I just have to say, uh, reached the fifteen hundred dollar goal that woo, we were shooting woo. for for the Helen Keller Foundation. So thank, thank you, everybody. You. That was that's fantastic. Um, I appreciate everyone that's here today. Uh, thank you, Eddie, Matthew, Rich, Travis. It's been great talking to you. Um, thank you for supporting Triacon, and I look forward to Onyx PathCon next month, where I'm going to just try to play things and not run things. So oh, that'd be great. That Can you do that? Are you allowed to do that? I'll try. We'll see what happens. <laughs> uh, I've tr- I've tried that before, Josh. You won't like it. No, 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 no. Well, thank you, all, and we are. We will see you hopefully at Onyx PathCon. Absolutely. Absolutely. See you guys later. Bye bye.